Hello and welcome once again to another episode of Open Talk. In today's episode, our guest is Iman Nuruddin, the chairman of the Dream Society, and she will talk to us about the society. Welcome to our program, Iman. Thank you. Thank you so much. Iman, to start with, can you tell me about the Dream Society? Dream Society is a society that makes the dreams of the terminally ill or seriously ill kids come true. Mm -hmm. So kids with debilitating diseases such as cancer, kidney, um, heart disease, di um, specific diabetic kids, sickle cell and so forth. Yeah, okay. And our mission is really to try to give them a normal life. Most charities really focus on the medical part, which mm -hmm. they should, and the necessities. But what we notice is we forget that these kids are kids. Mm -hmm. And so what Dream Society aims to do is bring that childhood back. Okay. Because obviously the psychology of the kid makes a big difference. So we make his dream come true, whatever it is. We never say no. And we also do um, monthly um, events for the kids to okay. make sure that we always bring them together and make their life as normal as possible. And how do you see, how do you see that f the feedback of the, par the parents of these kids that are, that are ill? Um, oh, the, it, because the dream is not really only focused on the kids. So the kid, yes... M makes the dream and hopes and everything but then the parent it gives the break it gives the parents a break mm -hmm. so and we always involve the parents in the dream so whether even in traveling we the, the whole family goes together okay and so it makes a big difference it gives everyone a break and to see their kids smile and some of them see say this is the first time they've seen them smile or this is the first time they're interacting with other people okay. so it kind of gives them relief and it's it's a day where we all forget that the kid is sick. That's the point. That's really nice. Mm. So can you tell me the background? How did you guys come up with this initi initiative? So it came out of an idea. It was actually a group of friends and we wanted to do something. We want to give back to society, but we couldn't find our place. We didn't know what to do. Some charities wouldn't want donations more than volunteer work and we wanted to do work. Okay. And then when we discussed it between each other, we said we wanted to do something for kids. Mm -hmm. And then um, the idea of doing dreams came by because um, I remember we understood that we wanted to do things for kids that were sick. And so um, Dr. Hussain invited me and the two doctors that are with us in the, in the board mm -hmm. to come and meet the kids to see what it is. So we had an idea that we wanted to bring presents and stuff like that. And we went room to room. Okay. Asking the kids what would their dream be. And they all said cinema, cinema, cinema. Most of them said cinema. One said PlayStation. Okay. And then I came out, I was confused because I couldn't get why they, their dream was to go to the cinema. Mm -hmm. Because that's like 3, 4 BD. Like exactly. Yeah. Any sickness has, doesn't, has nothing to do with wealth. Yeah, and you don't, not because you're poor, you're sick. Yeah, or exactly. not because you're rich, you're sick. But of course. It's just peop people from different backgrounds. So I went to Dr. Hussain and I told him, I don't get it. Why would their dream be to go to the cinema? Okay. Well, because you might think of it. So most of these kids have been sick since the age of two or three. Okay. Th therefore, um, their immunity is very low. And the cinema is like a box full of diseases because people come in and out, you know, and it's okay. they don't de-infect the whole thing. So it doesn't affect the whole thing. So they're not allowed to. Okay. And then here is where I know, I'm like, oh my God, we take things for granted. We do, yeah. And so here we decided, okay, it's not enough to get them a gift. It's not enough to do something. We need to keep doing stuff to get them to feel normal. So we, that, at that time, CEDA, we called them Cynical. They were the only cinemas available mm -hmm. at City Center. And um, we disinfected the whole thing and invited nice. the kids to come. So he... It was at that point did we realize that what you're doing would make an impact. Of course. And this is what you want to do. Yeah. Well, that, this is a, a very, very nice and great initiative. Yeah, thank you. When, when, you, when you see a child that's not ill and you make them happy, that it, it feels good. And the fact that making any child feel good in any circumstance, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, definitely. So can you tell me... Um, so do you have volunteers that work with you guys? Yes, or? Uh, we depend s solely on members and volunteers that are working. We have two admin, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Hanan and Iman who take care on the day-to-day -day basis. And then we obviously have the board, but most of the hard work and the day-to-day -wor -day work comes from the volunteers of making these dreams come true. Okay. Because it's not easy to make a dream come true. You have to get medical permission. You need to make sure you do it soon enough so that you make sure if the, the kids have bad progress, um, prognosis, you want to make it soon. Okay. You want to, um, you know, it, there's a lot of steps into making those dreams come true and to make sure that it's perfect because each kid only gets one dream. So mm -hmm. you're trying your best to make it perfect. So it takes a whole village to make one dream come of true. Course, so yeah. our volunteers really do work a, lo a lot. Yeah. And so what if someone wants to uh, wants to be a volunteer at this moment? How can they be? A All volunteer? they have to do is contact us through Instagram and okay. um, automatically one of the admins will call them up, show okay. them what they need to do be added to a WhatsApp group and then they just get in. We just straight so away it's take easy. them in. Yes. All right. And they're straight away got in and pushed in to do something because That's there's a nice. lot of work. That's very nice. Yeah. So I believe everyone out there should consider this because it's, it's very important. Yeah. And you could be, because some people are worried of meeting the kids and not able to handle it. You can be in the background and you can be in the foreground. So you can be the one rushing to help us buy balloons and cakes and putting things together coordinating or you mm -hmm. could be the one that actually goes to the kid and makes it happy be there in the events and play with the kids of course yeah well that that that's lovely yeah so can you tell me uh uh for ramadan what do you have uh, so ramadan? every ramadan we try to make it very special we have this thing called 30 days 30 dreams Okay. So we try to make at least 30 dreams come true on in the 30 days of Ramadan. Okay. And so that e for every day of Ramadan, we have a dream come true. Nice. And so it becomes very, very hectic at that point. And we also do an event for okay. them. So we have two events, one in San Mani Hospital in the oncology ward mm -hmm. um, because um, they don't get to go out. But we come to them and we do a party and then one outside if there's a sponsor or some someone that wants to handle it, um, they end up handling it outside. So we invite the kids that are not in the hospital to be able to come and join. Okay, that's very nice. Yeah. So uh, are you going to be having other events this year? No, um, you, this is the main event. And okay. then obviously we have a fundraiser, which will be a gala, which comes in November. Okay. Um, we moved it. It used to be every Ramadan. Okay. Number one, it's just, it becomes too much pressure for us to have both. Mm -hmm. And then we've read that there's so many Ghabgas going on. So we wanted to at least make it a little bit different to get people excited to come. Mm -hmm. Because the more people that come, the more we can actually fundraise for these kids. Of course. So we're making it into a gala in November so we can bring performances and we make it more fun and add things to it. That's very nice. Yeah, I, so I, will, I, look forward I personally to would look very forward Please to that. Please do come, yes, definitely. <laughs> so Iman, can you tell me uh, what was the most dream that was touching for you as a person? Um, there are many touching dreams, I have to say. Yani, I can't pinpoint one specifically, but the one that I think moved most of us and got us um, really fighting. It was the first one we did. Okay. Because it was fine in theory. We're, go we're helping these kids. They're telling me, uh, but the reality of it hit when we did the first one. Okay. So the first one, um, she was a 13 year old girl and she wanted a camera. And so when I asked her why she wants the camera, because we just don't buy what they want. We try to create the whole experience. Okay. She said, because I know I'm going to die and we're going to go to Syria when Syria was fine. Okay. So we're going to go to Syria and with my parents and I want to take pictures because they don't have pictures of me as memories. Okay. And so I want to I want to take I want them I want there to be a lot of photos so they can have a lot of memories about me. And so obviously we got the printer, we got everything and everything. And we made her dream come true. We surprised her and everything. And a few weeks later, she went to Syria. She came back and she passed away. Okay. So here it, it really touched us because the reality of what we do became real. You know, you don't think of it when you're playing with the kids, especially if they don't look sick. Of you course. don't think about um, how terminal they are. You kind of forget. And that's the nice thing about it. We forget that they are actually sick because we're playing with kids all the time. Mm -hmm. And then when it actually happens, it's, it touches it's very you. Yeah, it's very, very heartbreaking. And 
you're like, oh my, any, it gives you a reason to do more. You're like, okay, we need to do more. We need mm -hmm. to make sure that this happened. We need to make sure that we're not late. You need to make sure, because you see the importance of it, you know? And I think that one touched us a great deal. It is. It's, it's a very, very touching story. <laughs> yeah. So, Iman, can you tell me where do you see the Dream Society in the future when it comes to all your hard work? We, we just are uh, working hard to grow, trying to make as many dreams come true. Mm -hmm. um, Alhamdulillah, at this point, a lot of the hospitals know us, so automatically okay. our applications are with the hospitals. The doctors automatically recommend, they know what our criteria is. Okay. And we do have a medical committee, so when someone sends the application, it goes to that committee. Okay. They assess if it fits our criteria, and if it does, then they send the application to us to make it come true. Um, but we do hope that we're able to expand this idea from just not only on the island, but to expand this idea to make it more global, mm -hmm. um, like in South and especially within the GCC area. And so we're collaborating with Make a Wish Foundation and seeing where we can take this and actually take it to the next step. Well, I, I really wish you guys all the best. <laughs> Thank you. And Iman, what would you like to tell everyone out there that's watching us today? Um, as your initiative is very great and if someone has some kind of an initiative to help others to basically bring it forward we could say yeah what would you uh, advise them um i would advise them that if they just follow us on instagram and if they just see what we're doing and if anything inspires them and they can think of an idea that we can do for the kids that they mm -hmm. can participate in so or they can be a part of or they hear a story that they want to join to just look and see because you never know like last time um, I had a I put on the Instagram that one kid wanted an iPhone and this guy just bought an iPhone for himself okay and um, he saw it on Instagram and just came to my house and just gave it to me That's and nice. said you know what give this guy an iPhone so um, once uh, we were looking for a um, a princess okay to come to be a princess and to come in and everything and right away we got a message on instagram saying i'll be the princess give me the costume and i'll wear it nice and so we do ask people to help us out all the time we do try to get people involved and um, try to get the communities involved in making these dreams come true so uh, sometimes we put a certain story and someone's like i want to be part of making that dream come true and it's important to the donations are very very important but also the man work and hours that we need to put in also make a big difference of course it yeah. does because you never know who will know who to make that dream come true of course of course that's yeah. so true well thank you iman for being with us and uh, i really enjoyed listening thank to you this thank whole you so thing. much for inviting us thank and um, allowing us to talk about dream society and thank getting you. the word out there uh, thank, thank you. you would you like to say any last words to no. everyone out thank there? you <laughs> thank you very much thank you iman thank you once again, our guest today was Iman Nuruddin, the chairman of the Dream Society. Thank you for watching Open Talk and have a good evening.